Coming up on Good Taste, heavenly kebabs, divine desserts, and out of this world seafood. You know, oh, so, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> from a South African chef drawing inspiration from a higher power. Then, how about a quick trip to the coast, sort of, for a heaping helping of chowder fries. Chowder. 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 I think I got it. From one of Austin's most popular chefs. Plus, gourmet food is served on paper plates at this tiny hill country kitchen. It's the big butt belly. <laughs> and it's a dance you don't want to miss. A personality packed edition of Good Taste starts right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. What a view we have here at the Galleria, the largest shopping center in Texas, and one of the best in my opinion. This place is home to hundreds of fine stores, two high-rise hotels, even an ice skating rink. It's also home to one of the most unique dining experiences you'll have in all of Houston. Peli Peli, a little slice of heaven. It's an international fusion of art, light, color, and cuisine. From succulent South African style seafood, tender Huguenot influenced filet, and Portuguese espatada dripping with garlic. It's all about flavors. It's all about putting it together and nothing's overpowering anything and you've got so much going on there. You know, oh, so, whoa. yeah. <laughs> Just a small taste of what Chef Paul Friedman has created at his incredible restaurant, Peli Peli, at Houston's Galleria. Every bit of the restaurant is beautiful, but each element really tells a story. Yes, it does. And we want to uh, give people an opportunity and an experience. Uh, every little part of this restaurant has a, has a, a unique character, there's a lot of history behind everything, and it's really, it's, 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 it's so amazing uh, to see the reaction of people when we tell our story. A few years ago, Paul suffered some personal and financial setbacks. He literally knelt down and prayed for help. I said, God, please help me. I don't know what to do. And I, I said, you know what, if you help us build this restaurant, I will dedicate it to you. An investor miraculously appeared on his doorstep and helped fund the restaurant. So much of Pele Pele's art and architecture is rooted in Paul's faith and the memories from his childhood in South Africa. I got to see a whole pride of lions under a tree and uh, they devoured their lunch and I got to see this and I, I knew one day there was going to be something that I was going to be doing that uh, had something to do with that tree and the lions. That tree was an acacia tree, a biblical symbol of strength depicted here in the artwork, along with the 12 tribes of Israel. Paul commissioned world-famous performance artist Paul Garibaldi to create the beautiful paintings. I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he, he paints this picture upside down. And he's amazing. Yeah, and then he turns it the right way up and you say, oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, and as you watch it, you really do think, how in the world is this going to be anything? Exactly. And, yes. and it, he's, he's such a Absolutely gifted artist. Amazing. Even the ambient lighting is a work of art, inspired by the South African savanna. What we've done in the main dining room is to try to capture, if you were sitting under an acacia tree and the sun rose and set and then the night came, and so we've, we've made it to where you have an experience of being out in the wild. All combined to create an ethereal dining experience. But it's Peli Peli's amazing fusion of flavors that transport you to another world. If you were describing Peli Peli to someone, the experience you hope they come away with, what would it be? Well, I think there's a misconception of what South African food is. It's certainly not giraffe, hippopotamus, and elephant. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is the espatada, which is like, uh, it means beef on a, s a stick or skewered beef, right? And so on the top of this, I'm going to put garlic. Oh, and wow. this is just going to drizzle down, and as you can see it drizzling down like that. 
And so, what a creation. Oh, and the garlic, I love it. It's, this is a gar all about garlic. Mm -hmm. And so, here we have carrot brady, which is uh, my uh, interpretation of a mashed potato. There's carrots, leeks, and Russian potatoes all mashed together after yeah. it's been boiled in a pot. Have a chopped a little cilantro with little herbs and spices. So, with all these international influences, what's the one key ingredient that brings it all together? <sighs> I love the combination of flavors. Your food has combinations that I wouldn't have thought of and things you don't see in many other restaurants. This is true and that, that's what makes us uniquely different because it's, uh, it's not only inspired by the, uh, the spice that was founded by the Portuguese which is, which is known as Peri Peri. Uh, the French changed the spelling to Peri Peri and the Portuguese spell it P-E-L-I and hence the name Pali Pali. Huh. Yeah, so we use that uh, in practically everything that I cook with, but you wouldn't know because it's a hot habanero pepper. One of the most popular dishes on the menu, the Cape Town skillet with scallops, calamari, mussels, and giant prawns. We have shrimp that are called prawns, and these come from South Africa. Those so are huge. They are, they're like, they're like little mini lobsters, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so you can eat the legs, you can eat you're uh, kidding. Not, yes, oh yes. And we, uh, what we do in the restaurant is we actually have the wait staff peel it for everybody. You so eat the legs? Yes, you can. That's Why? The, that's a... Plate it on a bed of rice with curry and cumin. It's kind of a South African version of paella. And that's how we serve that. And then the only other thing that I need to do uh, is I'm going to add some chakalaka sauce to what? my chakalaka sauce. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you, <laughs> no, well, let me wait. Let me tell you what chakalaka sauce is. Chakalaka is, in Zulu, when you say chaka, it means to throw. Okay. And in Dutch, when you say laka, it means awesome. So when you say chakalaka like together, you're throwing awesomeness. Chakalaka? Yeah. I like that. So we're throwing some awesomeness onto those uh, muscles. Okay. You guys don't trust me. All right. <laughs> yeah, just bite them off. Oh, there you are. And then mm -hmm -hmm, all the flavors Whoa. right there, isn't it? Isn't yes. that great? Oh my gosh, yes. yes. Okay. Happy birthday. So whether you're celebrating something special or you just want a truly superb meal, Peli Peli offers everyone a whole lot of chakalaka. This has been amazing. I cannot wait to see what's next. The client to life. Cheers. Paul, you're one of a kind. Coming up. You won't believe the gourmet goodies coming from this tiny kitchen in Tarpley, Texas. All served with plenty of personality. There's usually beer involved. <laughs> well, that, that probably helps. It does. But next, Jack is back. The new coastal concept reeling in a crowd with super fresh seafood. Look at that baby. He's, oh, wow. He's rocking and rolling. <laughs> we'll save you a seat at the chef's table. We'll be right back. Good things come from Cisco. Welcome back. Craving seafood? No time for a trip to the coast? Well, we found a spot just up the road from Austin where the fish is fresh off the boat and the chowder fries are already the talk of the town. Barely open a week and already, Salt Traders is a packed house. Can I get a picture of you and my husband? No surprise, because Jack Gilmore is in the house. Just like the very popular Jack Allen's Kitchen, Salt Traders is all about local, fresh, all right, enjoy. and fun. This South Texas native brought everything he loves about the ocean to Salt Traders. The decor, soothing hues of coastal blues. Well, we want you to feel like you're on the coast. There's plenty of warm wood tones, lots of texture. This place has great feel. Everything in here is reclaimed. This is a reclaimed uh, old longleaf pine that we yeah. put together. Uh, that's reclaimed Chicago brick on the back bar. The centerpiece of the restaurant is the giant bar. Clever craft cocktails, local beers and wines on one side, and then ringside seats on the other, where shiny steam kettles cook your food right before your eyes, and fast. These beauties hit 500 degrees in less than 30 seconds. I want to give you a Salt Trader apron. I'm not Am sure I if official? You want to it. You're official. Heck yeah! I'm not going to pay you, but you, I want you to take this home and use it, okay? I'll do one better than take it home. Oh, yeah. yeah! Ready to get to it? I was dying to try so many of the awesome dishes here. 
Golf classics like snapper collars, lightly dusted with cornmeal and Cajun steak seasoning, all flash fried for Christmas. Then there's always a simple sauteed fresh fish on the menu. Tonight, it's mahi-mahi, flown in fresh and served with wild rice and a spring salad with sherry vinaigrette. But that's just a tiny taste of the fresh seafood in this kitchen. Okay, so what do we got here? So if you don't mind, we're doing a yellowfin tuna right out of the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, nice, so, yeah. And, and typically we go, I go for thickness, like eight out, uh, inch and a quarter, yes. and then whatever, is left over, I'll cut it up and that's what we make ceviches out of. Fresh fish from the ocean and fresh produce right off the farm. Myers lemons, Myers lemons came out of the valley oh, wow. um, last fall. And these are fall. used in the kitchen as well? Yep. yep, salads and homemade pickles, those came out of somebody's uh, garden in Hutto, Texas. Great mussels, great fish. And this beauty. Look at that baby. He's, oh wow. He's rocking and rolling. <laughs> He's so happy to be in here right now. <laughs> the seafood creations here are sensational. Yeah. We're working on some really good Prince Edward Sound mussels oh, right now. Oh, look at those. That's how you do it. Doesn't that smell good? It smells amazing. And then over here, we got a broiler that goes up to about 1,400 degrees. Oh, whoa. Wait till you try these delicious oysters hot off the grill. It's organized chaos. Okay. That's a good thing. Yeah. Also good, the dish at Salt Traders that's become the talk of the town. And get the chowder of rice for sure. Yeah, they're amazing. That's an understatement. This dish is loaded with hand-cut Idaho potato french fries and rich homemade clam chowder. Kind of a coastal poutine. We're going to build it. We're just going to put a couple ladles on it. And then I've got some really, really good uh, leeks and and bacon and and onion and stuff. We're gonna layer it. So we'll layer it like this. I've never seen this done with well, clam chowder. I don't think anybody's done it, but Chris Chris and I, we did a lot of traveling and we saw some cool things and this is what we want to eat when we're starving. One more ladle of chowder and another layer of fries. Oh, Th this goes, wow. yeah, it's not bad for you. It's not bad no. for you. And then uh, I know you, Tandy, really well yeah. and you love you some bacon. We'll start showing it some respect. These are chowder fries. That's right. Poutine will be Chowder. 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 I think I got right. it. Time to dig in. Mmm. So I'm thinking a little... Y'all are all really jealous, aren't you? This Maybe. is awesome. Chowder fries up. Food's great. I mean, great place. We've enjoyed everything. We enjoyed the chowder fries. It's not just about serving great food here. At Salt Traders, every delicious, colossal shrimp cocktail sold sends money to coastal conservation. You'll be taken good care of too at Salt Traders, whether it's something tropical from the bar. That's good. Or seafood sizzling on the grill. Everything's absolutely delicious. There will be smiles all around. Okay, everybody, the moment we've been waiting for, we're going to show you how to make those delicious chowder fries from Salt Traders. I'm with my go-to chef with HEB Cooking Connection, Chef Belinda. Super easy to do at home, right? Easy, fun, tasty, quick. And HEB's got the prawns. Show us what go. we got. There we go. We're gonna use steak fries, cook them in your oven, a microwavable applewood smoked bacon, and the star of the show, Tangi, is the clam chowder. And the combination of this clam chowder on fries it's, it's unbelievable. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Forget the diet. Okay, show us how we do it. Okay. The fries go in the oven on the foil and cookie sheet. Okay. And um, you've got the bacon that goes in the microwave, lickety split quick. And we're gonna go ahead and use that soup. Get it prepared nice and piping hot so it's steaming. And we're ready for your chowder fries. So on top of those yummy steak fries, go ahead and ladle on some of this yummy clamness. Oh, look at that and then garnish it with your chopped up applewood smoked bacon, right like that. Garnish it like you like it. Go ahead and put some green onions on top and the bacon tangy and... Mmm. It's just so good. It's like a baked potato on steroids. Of course. So easy. All right, as always, we have the recipe on goodtaste.tv. My wine finds of the week are coming up, but first, gourmet food is served on paper plates at this tiny hill country kitchen. 
Good Taste will be right back. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. It's a beautiful drive through the Texas hills to get to Mac and Ernie's. The really small restaurant is about 10 minutes west of Bandera. Blink and you'll miss it. Okay, out. The sausage is coming right behind. That's Naylene, the owner, the chef, the gal who makes things happen. A lady whose talent and personality make Mac and Ernie's a true hill country find. For folks who've never been to Mac and Ernie's, what's it like at Mac and Ernie's? It's pretty laid back and uh, low key. It's my party. I like to have fun. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So we're gonna. You have like fun. to have fun too. I absolutely like to have fun. I've heard that about you. <laughs> it's a well kept secret. <laughs> Mac and Ernie's is all about fun. Yeah, we're loving it. Me. Enjoying the food. We're having some catfish and shrimp tonight. <laughs> Cheers. Friendly, laid back, and the food is fantastic. Everything's homemade. Everything. We make everything. We make our tartar sauce, we make our red sauce, we make all the sauces on the meat, we make our salad dressing, I cut the steaks, I cut the lamb, I cut the fish, we peel the shrimp. You name it, we do it. It's all done in this tiny little kitchen. I'm about a minute off on those four fish. Thanks to a hard working team. That drum to go is on. The veg for those next three is not. Five. Those five are on. We send out with just this small staff 150 plates a night. 150 plates a with night? With the five of us. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Are you just wiped out at the end of the night? We're pretty tired. <laughs> There's so usually why. beer involved. <laughs> well, that, that probably helps. It does. <laughs> it really does. Before this tiny crew is able to pop open a cold one, they got to keep the catfish frying. Okay, it's going to be turn and burn, Gerilyn. And the grill going with its sizzling steaks, fish fillets, and Bandera farm-raised quail. It's a menu that can change in a heartbeat. So how do you choose what goes on your menu? What I'm hungry for. Really? Yes, and, I, and you'll never see black-eyed peas on my menu or lima beans. Usually, cabrito is on the menu, sourced from a tiny farm right across the street. We're out of cabrito right now because the coyotes ate all my market goats. Um, for real, they did. Uh, One of the most popular dishes here, one that stays on the menu, are those grilled quail covered in a smoky and sweet ancho chili honey sauce. I came up with this ancho chili honey based sauce that I put on the quail and, I, and that's one thing I can't change. People there would be mutiny or... Another winner on the menu the night we were there, the toasted walnut and blue cheese duck sausage with pickled red onions and blueberries. You don't expect to find this type of um, gourmet fare in a little place like Tarpley. But that's what, that's what makes the hill country of Texas so uh, enticing. Kind of a big difference between Tarpley, Texas, and Brooklyn. Yeah, I would say so. But it's uh, maybe polar opposites, but they're both awesome. So. Speaking of awesome, the desserts, they sell out fast. Yet another reason Mac and Ernie's has been cooking strong for 16 years. How did you build the business? You told me that one trust. of Trust. Trust? Trust. It was built on the, on the trust that every time you came and ate at Mac and Ernie's, because it's a drive to get here from anywhere, that you were going to get a good meal. parts of my job is tasting a lot of wines to find the very best ones to share with you and that's what I'm going to do right now. I thought in celebration of the cooler weather we'd do red wines and red wines from regions outside of Napa so they're going to be a little more affordable. Some great bargains here. Up first a wine called Horseplay. This one comes from the Paso Robles region, a region known for making some really good Cabernets. The fruit on this is bold on the front. Think dark cherries, plums, cassis, 
and then it finishes off with a soft touch and a hint of cocoa. It's just under $20. Some of the best bargains in wine are often buying the second labels. These are wines that are made by the high profile brands, but they're made by usually the same winemaker, usually many of the same grapes, and priced at about half the price of their star counterpoint. This is one of those wines. This is Laurel Glen's Counterpoint, and it's a beautiful wine. This is a cab from Sonoma, and it has raspberries on the nose, and then lush flavors of plums and cassis, priced at about $30 a bottle, nearly half the price of its famous wine. So look for that one, it's a good bargain. Last on the list today, but definitely not least, a wine made by Josh. All of the Josh wines are always on my go-to list. He also makes a great Chardonnay. This is the Cabernet. The wines are sourced from some of the best vineyards in the wine region, and they result in delicious wines, and you cannot beat the price. This Cabernet is only about $11 a bottle. All of the wines, as always, I found at HEB. Coming up, find out how you could want to stay at the beautiful Houstonian Hotel and Spa. Head to goodtaste.tv right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian, complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful, award-winning Trellis Spa. That's all our time for today. Thanks so much for joining us. And don't forget, if you miss any of today's show, you can always catch it online at goodtaste.tv. Cheers to good taste.